That he, has, yeah, well, he knows that he, he sort of brought someone into politics. Okay. That indirectly. Yes. Indirectly, yes. Yeah, well. yeah, so the way. so let, let's, let's go to the integrity of this matter. I mean, we, we've seen um, Atikwa Abubakar contest since 1993. He's been at the forefront of every election in this country, in different parties. Yet, the man has not been able to get victory at the polls. So we're here today. What, what, what does Atikwa stand for? Exactly. The youths are a bit, I mean, people that I've spoken with here and the different platforms as well, they're a bit unclear about as to the nature of his candidature. What does he bring to the table? I mean, they can tell you, for instance, and it'll be, he, okay, he, he brings um, shrewdness to governance. He mm -hmm. wants to cut expenses, he wants to put things right and that. They tell you, Anashwaju, okay, he has good head around him, he has worked for it over time. What does Atiku bring to the table? Atiku Abubakar, for me, is the most qualified Nigerian to be president, especially after um, what many of us believe is a divisive gov uh, government, you know, um, you know, of the outgoing APC. Atiku Abubakar has been there. Um, everybody who's running today, all the major contenders, um, they can claim to be two-term governors. Oh. Um, one governed Lagos State for two terms, another governed um, Kano for two terms, and then you have an Ambra. Oh. Um, but that's their, that's um, that's what they bring. Um, and governance at that level is not necessarily um, doesn't represent Nigeria. Atiku Abubakar is one Nigerian who has been the vice president, and while he was vice president, not only he he had basically um, a lot of that government or government powers ceded to him at that time, and, um, and he presided well, you know. Um, it was the political fallout that led to the 2007 um, debacle where he had to, to exit um, PDP at that time. But he was being prepared for that office at that time. And so many of us feel that um, this is the man that can unify Nigeria. This is the man that can um, appoint competent people but more importantly for our generation and for young people out there, this is the man that can open the door for young people to come into politics, administration, and governance. Um, when I was talking just now, you know, I, I said that um, we have to be pragmatic um, about um, going into politics because it's, it's, politics is basically the way you get into government. And if government affects all our lives, then, um, we then we should go into politics. But the problem a lot of us young people have, I mean, at my age, um, I'm close to 40, at my age, um, about four or five governors were in power in 1999. Um, you had the youngest governor, Samino Turaki. Oh. At that time, he was just 36. So, um, but if you're 36 and you're watching us from home, don't feel bad. Um, don't feel bad. <laughs> there's still hope. Um, yes, there's still hope <laughs> with Atiku Abubakar. But what usually happens in politics is you need someone to unlock the door. And that was what the Obasanjo Atiku administration did, you know, that was why um, someone like Soludo could become governor of Central Bank at the age of 44. Um, he was just 40 in 1999 when their government came in, and by the time he was appointed CBN governor, he was 44. And today he's now the governor of Anambra. There has to be a place, there has to be somebody that brings you into governance um, by, by, by launching you into that space. There has to be someone who opens the door. That's what I mean by opening the door. Mm. And um, that Atiku generation, is one generation that is eager to do that with us. Um, the, the, the one problem I have, or one challenge in my head that I have with the generation in their 50s, in their 60s, is that they have a penchant for holding on to power. Um, I just mentioned um, Sami Nuturaki, who was governor at 36. Sami Nuturaki served two terms. Sami Nuturaki is going to the Senate oh. um, in, night, in this election. Mm. I mean, he's in my party, so um, that's cool. I don't have anything against his aspiration. I support his aspiration. But their generation usually hands over power sideways, unlike the Obasanjo Atiku generation that is more comfortable with our generation coming in. And Atiku is that kind of person who appoints young people you know, around him, always wants to listen, always wants to engage. I, mean, I feel if that's the that kind of person he, uh, that we need. People around him, he encourages you to come up. Yeah, as I said, he's a, he's a veteran contestant. Uh, well, you can put it that way. You can put <laughs> yeah, it that way. I like, to see it, I like to see it more like... Somebody who's teaching our generation tenacity. 
Mm. Um, because look, this man is made. Okay, this man is made. This man is fine for life. If he decides not to, he has touched lives. He has established businesses. One of the largest employers in the country. Um, he's made for life. Okay, but but you know, a lot of us still need him in our generation because again, a lot of politics is down to so many things beyond um, what many of us think it is. I mean, you're like if you. You, you might feel, okay, I want to be governor, I want to be this, I want to be that, but sometimes you need somebody to of course. take you there. The mentor. You need someone course. to open the door. Mm -hmm. you, or you need someone to place their brand um, endorsement on you, sort of, mm -hmm. and, you know, and get you forward. So that's what Atiku Abubakar represents to us. The immediate preceding generation, those in their 50s, 60s, yes. who should be doing that for us, they still see it like it's their time. You know, they still see it like it's their time, and, and that's where... That's where someone like Atuka Baka comes in for me. I mean, so you just talked about um, him having his wealthy man. He is an employer of labor. Doesn't need a, he doesn't need the government for anything. And this is also part of the worry that a lot of people have with, with um, Atiku himself. It, it, it seems that his wealth is skewed in secrecy. <laughs> so, people can't, can't, I can't necessarily point to one thing, one, are you one, serious? one billion entity are you or, serious? or business that... Anytime I'm in Abuja, it came about as anytime well. I'm in Abuja, I drink Faro water. Faro water is, is, pop, is quite um, renowned up north, you know, and he, 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 he that, that's that his business. Him is, uh, water, he's into water. Atiku Abubakar is a businessman, he's a complete businessman. So this was someone who, while he was at customs, he saw an opportunity and, you know, he went into transportation business at that time. And then um, the customs had, um, they had logistics problem and he also got into, into it at that time, you know, and, and set it up. So those who know him and we who support him, we understand that he's somebody who is driven in that way, he has a fast food company over there in Abuja Chicken Cottage, you know, that he just started. He's somebody who keeps on trying innovations. And because, you know, he grew up so poor, mm. um, you know, he's that motivated um, that one of the first things that he did with his first salary was to try and build his mom a house because, you know, he was raised by a single mother. Um, he, tried, he built her a house, basically, with the first salaries that he got. So he's that kind of person who has always had an eye for business. Um, um, but, you know... His foray into politics um, is a lesson for so many of us that, look, you can try once, try twice, try three times, try four times. It might not be till the fifth time um, that you get it. And I remember when I ran for State Public Secretary in Lagos State, um, you know, um, I think I back had to mention at some point to me that he ran for governor four times before he became governor once. So sometimes, you know, and even for us... Governor. He didn't, become, he, to, he didn't even become the governor, you know, and then he immediately became vice president. So sometimes life works like that, but it's a lesson for us in tenacity. Hmm. That's quite interesting. I mean, Atiku as a man himself, we just, we just believe that the guy, for you to, you know, to run presidency in this country, you must have some serious amount of finance. And this man never goes broke. Well, I mean, you say that he has so many businesses. <laughs> Here and there, we would, we would do our research at the CAC. Uh, uh, and we we'll would look for these businesses. Yes, I mean, you will find them. We we'll look for these businesses. This Faro Water, you're talking them. about. Faro Water, Priam Group, you know, he has mm. a massive television station outfit, mm. you know, over I mean, that's, there. That's up interesting north. to know that the man. And is, then, you know, he started his secondary school, he started it with a primary school. Okay. You know, as far as the 1980s, started with the primary school, and then when the students got to primary six, they felt, look, where do we put these children? We've trained them. Let's create a secondary school. After secondary school, by that time he was in government, was being run by his wife, Princess Rukaya. And then she, you know, they decided to create um, um, American yeah. University. And the standard there tells you the kind of man that Atiku is. Although many of those who attend the school attend on scholarship. So the school is not essentially um, is something that profit brings making. revenue, profit making. You know? um, um, but the other businesses is the largest employer in Adamawa State. So... That's the kind of man that you know that Nigeria needs, someone that can get Nigeria working. Fantastic, fantastic.